going on everyone welcome back to the channel in today's tutorial we'll be doing something a little more involved and more interesting where we'll be actually doing some practical iot application by setting up the open source mqtt broker mosquito or eclipse mosquito on our raspberry pi and this video will be using a raspberry pi 4b but really you can use any raspberry pi model where you can download uh, this broker and we'll be using that to essentially send messages using the MQTT protocol from our local computer to our Raspberry Pi over the network, which will open a whole uh, realm of things we could do in terms of IoT and embedded systems. And just many practical use cases once you go through and integrate this sort of thing in your applications and learn how to do it. For those of you guys who don't know, MQTT is probably one of the most popular protocols in the IoT space. As you can see, it's slightly described here on the mosquito.org website. It pretty much provides a lightweight method of carrying out messages using a published subscribe model, which we'll see in this video. We're we'll doing that in Python, and we'll be setting it up on the local computer side and on the Raspberry Pi side. And you'll see how simple it is to send messages and commands from your local computer to your Raspberry Pi, or even vice versa, from your Raspberry Pi to your local computer using this protocol. And Eclipse Mosquito makes it especially really easy to install, lightweight, quick, and we're going through that end-to-end -end in this video. So if you are a beginner to this channel, or if, you, if this is your first time watching this channel, I highly encourage you to subscribe to the channel to stay updated on things related to Raspberry Pi, Arduino, IoT, and other software engineering things. We have a lot of content for beginners, intermediate, and advanced programmers. And even better, if you do like this video or other videos on the channel, please, as always, consider donating to the Buy Me A Coffee link down below to support content on this channel. So yeah, we'll be using Mosquito here. I'll link this in the description down below. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into the Raspberry Pi side of things. Once again, I'm using Raspberry Pi 4B. And we'll be doing this setup there, followed by the local setup. And by the end, we'll be sending messages from our local computer to our Raspberry Pi using MQTT. So let's jump into it. Okay, so jumping to the Raspberry Pi side of things, I have opened a terminal on my Raspberry Pi. So we just want to install Mosquito and Mosquito clients. And simply to do that, we just want to type in sudo apt update to make sure we have the latest version sudo apt. And then next thing we want to do is we simply want to install the Mosquito broker on our computer. So in order to do that, it's just this command right here. It's so simple, sudo apt install slash y of mosquito, mosquito slash clients. And that should be really quick. And that's really all we need in terms of getting mosquito on our Raspberry Pi, which is pretty impressive. So you wanna make sure it's running after you ran this command. So you just want to type in system CTL status mosquito. Sorry, we need an M there. And we can see that it's active and running. So cool, awesome, started 59 seconds ago. And you can continuously check that if you're having issues with your with your system and, and, and Mosquito to make sure that it is running as a sanity check. Next thing we want to do is we want to pip install the package because we will be interacting with Mosquito on our Raspberry Pi with Python. So we want to pip install paho slash mqtt or dash mqtt. And that should also install relatively quickly. Nice package that allows us to easily publish and receive messages on channels in MQTT and it's really popular and it's really easy to use. And we'll also be pip installing that on, on the computer side or the local computer side. So next thing we want to do as well is we want to edit the config file for Mosquito on our Raspberry Pi, which is where we're hosting the Mosquito service. And we want to enable external clients to connect to the broker. So in order to do this, we want to edit that config file so we want to run sudo nano and the path to the config. This should be the same path to your config. And nano is just the editor. So we just want to click enter. And we want to add these two lines on the bottom. So listener 1883. So 1883 is the port we'll be listening on, on our Raspberry Pi. And allow anonymous true. This will allow anonymous remote access, in this case, our local computer on the network to to publish to this broker without any authentication. So just add these two lines and then you can exit here by clicking uh, Control X on your keyboard. And sometimes it asks, do you want to confirm? Just click yes or enter. And then you should have those edits in in terms of the file. And finally, you just want to restart this service. So you want to restart the Mosquito service. So you can just type this command in. And once again, let's just do a check that it's working. 
by checking the status. And so we restarted it five seconds ago. It looks like everything is ready to go in terms of the, the infrastructure side and the packages side on our Raspberry Pi. So now we want to open a Python file. So you could just go ahead and create a Python file on your local computer. I'm using Thani as my editor and you can name the file, whatever you want. You could see it's really simple code. And this is all the code we will be needing on our Raspberry Pi side for today's video, very simple example. So we're just importing Paho mqtt.client as mqtt. And then we're setting this on connect and on message function. So this on connect function is the function that will be called when this script connects to the MQTT broker. So it just prints a message indicating that the connection status and uh, the result code. So you could see this result code. Um, you get result codes of zero to five for a mosquito. So zero means you successfully connected to the broker. Anything other than that, one to, to five is, is, a, is a bad connection or you couldn't connect. And the exact meetings of one to five, you can find those online. But if you don't get a result code of zero when you run this code, there is something wrong with your configuration. So just walk through that process or let me know in the comment section down below. And finally, what we do is we subscribe to a specific topic or channel. We call it an MQTT. So you can name this whatever you like. Just make sure it's consistent on the Raspberry Pi side and the local computer side. Uh, I just have some weird name here. You don't need these forward slashes, so don't let that confuse you. You could just name it, I don't know, Pi or whatever you like for that. And what's cool about MQTT is you could have multiple channels, so very scalable, and you can manage different messages across different channels, which makes it very powerful for distributed systems. Next thing we have is this on message. So this is the function that is called, it's a callback function when a message is received on this channel that we defined here. So this is essentially the action we're taking once someone sends a, a payload to this topic. So we can process that in a certain way. In this video, we're processing that message really simply. We're just printing it on the screen. But really, this can be extended to really interesting applications. You can control uh, pins on your Raspberry Pi with certain messages. You can tell your Raspberry Pi to take a photo based on a certain message, and you could just send a all other sorts of complicated strings to tell your Pi to do things based on the code you define in this on message function. So this is where all the magic is done in terms of where you want real life IoT applications. But in our video, we're just doing something really simple. We're just gonna print the message from our local computer that we're sending on that channel. So here we're just initializing the clients, the on connect function and the on message function as part of the client. And we're just connecting on local host because it is running on our local host on our Raspberry Pi and on port 1A3. But this 60, you don't have to worry about for the sake of this video. And we're just going to print listening forever for debugging purposes. And we're just going to loop forever. So we're just going to loop forever and keep listening on this channel until hopefully we get a message and we'll continue listening after that even until we stop the code. So I can just go ahead and run this now and hopefully I get a zero. Okay, cool. So connected with result code zero, as you can see here. So I am connected to my broker successfully on the Raspberry Pi side in Python. And finally, the last thing I want to do before I exit this Raspberry Pi screen is we want to get the IP address of our Raspberry Pi on our local network because we'll be using that on the local computer side on my Mac code when I run Python code on my Mac to access the broker. So in order to do that, we just want to go back to the terminal here. So this is the, the last step on the Raspberry Pi side. And we just want to run the command if config. And we just want to copy this inet IP address and just save it somewhere. And we'll be using that on our local computer side of things in the Python code. And we'll just be substituting that back in. So once you're up to this point, hopefully you got everything running. We're going to jump into the local computer code, which is very, very simple. Okay, so now jumping back to my local computer. First thing we have to do is we have to open a terminal in our Mac or just CMD on a Windows to pip install the package. So I just want to go here. I want to search terminal and I want to pip install. So I'm using pip3. If you don't pip the install, you could just do pip install and we're just gonna do paho.mqtt. Next thing we want to do is, as you can see, I'm on my desktop here. So I just want to create a Python file. Um, you can use any editor. I like to use the editor in the terminal, which is vi. 
and I'm just going to open the file that I already have existed. So I'm just using an editor in the terminal. So if you're not familiar with VI, don't be overwhelmed. You could just use any editor. You can use VS Code or anything to run Python code on your computer. I'm just using this because we're already in the terminal. And I have this local code here. So very, very simple code, even simpler than the code on our Raspberry Pi. So we're just importing the Paho MQTT dot publish because in this case we're publishing and we are passing in the address of our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so that's where the MQTT broker is located. And we're using the same channel as we mentioned there, we're just defining that. And the message we have here is hello Raspberry Pi, but really you can define the message however you like as you mentioned for your application's needs or it could be other things to trigger other, other actions on your Raspberry Pi. And then we just publish single. So we're just gonna run this code and hopefully once it runs, we publish that, that single message and we should see it in the console of our Raspberry Pi Python code. So I'm just going to exit this. So you can just go ahead and copy the content of this code on your Python file. Once again, you can name the Python file, whatever you want. So I'm just gonna exit that the editor and I'm just going to run that code. So Python three local code.py. So it looks like it ran. So let's jump back to the Raspberry Pi to see the message in the console. Okay, so jumping back quickly to the Raspberry Pi, we see the message in the console. So if you got up to this point, it is complete. You sent a message from your local computer message or a command or however you want to call it to your Raspberry Pi over the network, which as we mentioned, just opens the door to so many IoT applications and distributed system applications because this is an absolute building block you can use to build some really awesome and interesting projects regarding remote control and all sorts of things. So if you did that, congratulate yourself. And even better, if you enjoyed it, please once again, consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video. And also if you've had any issues in this video, let me know in the comment section down below. And also let me know if you liked it in the comment section or have any suggestions. And if you want to see part two and part three, which I'm probably going to do anyways, because I think this opens the door to much more interesting projects I would like to show you guys. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for future videos regarding MQTT and other Raspberry Pi content. Thanks for watching. Take it easy and see you next time.